What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to be giving you four pieces of controversial advice for success. These are pieces of advice that kind of go against the norm, against what you've likely heard or read about elsewhere in order to be successful. Now, I will say I don't consider myself to be the be-all, end-all, pinnacle example of entrepreneurial success. I am no Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos yet, but I do think that I have achieved some level of success with my company Algo Expert or with this YouTube channel, with my professional life. And since these pieces of controversial advice are based on my experience, I do think that they have some merit. Now, one caveat that I want to say before I jump into these controversial pieces of advice is actually something that I mentioned in a video a few months ago where I shared lessons that I've learned in my 20s, and it's that every piece of advice in general, in life, right, is inherently subjective. Every piece of advice tends to be something that has worked for the person giving the advice, but won't necessarily work for everybody receiving the advice. All that to say that it's very possible that these pieces of controversial advice that I'm going to be giving you here are not going to be relevant to you. Maybe they won't work for you, and it's going to be your job to dissect them and to figure out whether or not they work for you. So with that said, let's jump into the first piece of controversial advice, which is that in order to be successful in life, especially in entrepreneurship, you absolutely do not need to read books. In fact, I can't remember the last time that I read a legitimate book. If I had to guess, it's probably back in college, although even back in college, which is like five years ago now, I don't think I read a single book. There was maybe one class where we had to read a book, and I think I just used the internet to find a summary of it. Otherwise, probably would have to be back in high school. Now, I realize that this goes against basically any advice that you've probably read in self-help books or seen in self-help videos or heard from famous people, including successful people, admittedly, like Bill Gates, for example, who's notorious for reading like a book a week or even more than one book per week. But let's try to take a step back and understand why this isn't actually necessarily a piece of advice of reading books that you have to do and why it might actually be beneficial for you not to read books. Now, by the way, when I'm talking about reading books here, I'm talking about nonfiction. Because if you're reading fiction, as far as I'm concerned, fiction, like sci-fi, for example, or fantasy novels, that's the equivalent of playing a video game or watching a movie. It's not really going to benefit you for entrepreneurship. But if we're talking about nonfiction books, what does it mean to read a book? Well, basically, at its core, you are consuming content that is presumably valuable because the person who wrote that content, that book, is someone who has accomplished a lot of things, who's knowledgeable in a particular field. That's why you are consuming the content, reading the book, right? And yes, at face value, that seems like a useful thing to do. But the truth is that in this day and age, there are 10 different ways or many different ways to consume content. For example, you can watch videos like this video that you're watching right now. And hopefully the content that I'm giving you here is useful, but it's the exact same type of content that you could get from a book, except here you're getting it in video format in just 10 minutes or even five minutes if you watch videos in two times speed like I do. And you might not even be watching this video. Maybe you're just listening to this video while doing other things. So you're being doubly productive, so to speak. And you could consume content differently too, right? You could listen to podcasts, you could read articles, you could read tweets or LinkedIn posts, really short form content that could still bring you value. Like right now, we live in a world where we have access to this information graph online on the internet, where we can literally traverse this information graph, much like a software engineer would traverse a graph in algorithms and data structures, by just you know, clicking on links and consuming different pieces of information in an instant where you can go on a tweet and read a little bit of information about, I don't know, decentralization and Bitcoin, which then leads you to a Wikipedia article that you spend 10 minutes on reading about, I don't know, the history of the monetary policy in the world. And then you go to three different Wikipedia articles that give you more information. That brings you to a YouTube video that tells you even more stuff about something else. And in the span of 20 minutes, you have consumed really valuable knowledge and gotten really valuable knowledge 
that you could have gotten in a book as well, but maybe you got it more efficiently. Or maybe you got a wider breadth of knowledge that you would have otherwise gotten in a book, and you got it through a medium or through multiple mediums that you enjoy consuming more than reading a book. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that just because a piece of content or of knowledge is enclosed in a book does not make it any more valuable than the same knowledge enclosed in a tweet or in a LinkedIn post or in an article, or in a YouTube video. It's very important to realize this and not to blindly think that books are this magical thing that are going to make you successful. Okay, enough about books. Let's jump into the second piece of controversial advice. And this one is that in order to be successful, again, you absolutely do not need to wake up super early and you do not need to be a morning person. This is one of those pieces of advice that is so frequently given and so blindly given, it really frustrates me. Usually when people give the advice of waking up early in order to be more successful, they do so because in their mind they say, if you wake up, let's say at 4 a.m., those three hours that you have from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m., when nobody else is awake and when nobody can bother you, are hours during which you can get a lot of work done, you can be very productive, and you can effectively be ahead of everybody else. And at face value, that's fair. But you know what other three hours in the day can be uninterrupted and can give you the time to do really good productive work? the same 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. except before going to bed rather than right after waking up. In other words, you can stay up really late up until 4 a.m. and do work from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. where there's nobody awake and you can be very productive and uninterrupted just as you would be if you woke up at 3.30 a.m. and worked from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. in the morning, right? The point is, ultimately, you should do what works for you. If you're someone who is very productive in the mornings and you like going to bed really early and waking up really early, you do you. But if you're someone who's a night owl like me, who's more productive at night, then don't let someone tell you or influence you to wake up early just in the name of success when you're just going to be more successful at night and more miserable in the mornings. For me, I have found that I am more productive at night. Right now it's 2 a.m. I always find myself filming these YouTube videos in the middle of the night. Even when I try to film them a little bit earlier, usually I end up filming them at this hour. That's when I feel most productive and most creative for YouTube videos or even for other type of work. That doesn't mean that I don't work earlier in the day as well, but I just really like the night hours and it works for me. What matters is what you do during an interval of time, not when that interval of time is. So keep that in mind. Now I realize that I've given you two very controversial pieces of advice, so I figured that I would throw in a bonus fifth piece of advice that is absolutely not controversial. This one is geared specifically at software engineers who are preparing for their technical interviews, who want to land their dream job, and if you're one of those people, then super non-controversial. You want to use my company AlgoExpert to prepare for your technical interviews. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. Like I said, very non-controversial. Okay, back to controversy. Piece of advice number three. This one is very much a good example of the thing that I said at the beginning of the video, how all advice is inherently subjective, and it's that there are so many morning routines, and here when I say morning, I mean the type of thing that you do just after you wake up, whenever you wake up, but there are so many morning routines that people will tell you to do in order to be more successful, in order to be more productive, that are just absolute bullshit. Or maybe bullshit is a little bit too aggressive, but they're just super subjective. They happen to work for some people, but not for everybody. And to many people, they will simply not do anything. So I'll give you a few examples. One example is taking a cold shower right when you wake up. Another example is writing down three things that you're grateful for every single day in a personal journal. Another thing is meditating for 20 minutes right after you wake up. Another one is having a to-do list every single day with priorities and crossing off items whenever you complete them during the day. All of these things, I'm not saying that they are intrinsically bad, I'm sure that they work for some people, but to claim that they are the secrets to success is just asinine to say the least. Like, a cold shower 
yes, it has some documented benefits and it'll certainly wake you up, I suppose, but it's very uncomfortable. And personally speaking, it just does nothing for me but make my day worse at the beginning. Like, I've tried it in the past, it doesn't do anything for me. Sure, it wakes me up, makes me feel like shit during the, the two minutes that I'm taking it, and it just doesn't do anything for me. And it has not stopped me from reaching success. And it's not like if tomorrow I start doing cold showers every single day, I'm gonna suddenly turn into Elon Musk. It just doesn't work that way. Same for writing things that I'm grateful for every day. I think that that's a complete waste of time for me. I'm sure that for some people, they find value in it for whatever reason. For me, it's just a waste of time and I'm just not gonna do it, right? So just keep in mind that these things tend to be given as pieces of advice because they're very packageable and they're very actionable things. Like it's very easy to tell someone or to tell even yourself, you know what, I'm gonna start taking cold showers every day because you either do it or you don't do it. Whereas if I tell you, well, you gotta work harder, that's harder to keep track of, right? And so perhaps that's why these things are often given as pieces of advice, but I think that they're, you know, mostly bullshit for most people, or at least like just a very, very subjective. My fourth and final controversial piece of advice has to do with this growing sentiment that I've noticed against hustle culture. Hustle culture being this culture that glorifies hard work, that glorifies sacrificing a lot of things in life in the name of hard work, in the name of achieving success. And these days, there's this growing sentiment against that that says you should not work as hard. You should take care of your mental health, of your physical health. You should value other things in life, not just work and success. And I think that, you know, there's definitely merit to this growing sentiment. I think that it is important to value your mental health, physical health. There are other things that you should enjoy in your life. But here comes the controversial advice. In my opinion, especially in the early stages of an entrepreneurial venture. And by the way, when I say entrepreneurial venture, I'm not just talking about you know, launching a business, although that's obviously very relevant. I'm also talking about launching a YouTube channel, or picking up a new skill like coding, which is pretty difficult, or starting a new job. Especially in the early stages of an entrepreneurial venture like that, there is absolutely no substitute for hard work. Now that's not to say that you shouldn't also work smartly, like smart work is also very important, but just because you're working smart doesn't mean that you can't work hard also. And I'll give you a personal example here to convey this point. During the first two years, two and a half years of my company Algo Experts life, basically, it was a side business because both me and my co-founder had full-time jobs. You know, I was at Google and then Facebook and Algo Expert was a side business, something that I did outside of work. Now, I could have very well, in the name of work-life balance or in the name of, you know, anti-hustle culture, told myself, I'm gonna take my weekends off. During my weekends, I'm just never gonna work. Or maybe conversely, I could have said, I'll work on Algo Expert during the weekends, but during the week, in the mornings and in the evenings or during the night, I'm not gonna work on Algo Expert. I'm just gonna relax and you know, take care of myself and enjoy my life. But if I had done that, believe me when I tell you this, Algo Expert would not be where it is today. In fact, Algo Expert probably would have died. We probably would have never brought Algo Expert to a point where we could justify quitting our full-time jobs. And yeah, there would be no Algo Expert. That would not be a thing. And so you get the point, right? Like in the early stages of an entrepreneurial venture, hard work is just like what you have to do. It is what will determine whether you make it or not. And my opinion is that if you manage to make it without hard work, it's because you likely got lucky, not because it is typically doable. The truth is that it's usually later on, once you have achieved some level of success, that you can start to chill out a little bit more because that's when you've built something that can kind of run on itself, that probably has you know, economies of scale and that has certain uh, things that you have previously worked super hard to build that now allow it to be self-sufficient. So for example, right now, I actually have a little bit more luxury to perhaps chill a little bit more and take a step back from Algo Expert that I didn't have at the beginning 
when it was just, you know, an idea or just a very small business. So my opinion, you kind of have to forget about this anti-hustle culture sentiment if you are trying to do something that is very difficult, like launching a YouTube channel or a business or picking up a new skill like coding. At the beginning, you've got to work really hard and you've got to kind of make a lot of sacrifices. That's my piece of advice. So with that said, these were my four controversial pieces of advice. I realize, like I said, that they go against the norm. Hopefully you found them valuable. I'm sure that for some of you, you probably were like, hey, this is something that I totally agree with that I was always frustrated to hear about you know, in the news or in kind of normal articles. And yeah, I mean, hopefully I'm validating your thoughts here. Uh, for those of you who are kind of surprised by this, let me know what you thought about them in the comments below. I always welcome, you know, healthy debate and conversation. And otherwise, smash the like button if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content. Instagram if you like pictures. And otherwise, I will see you in the next video.